this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. Father, please anoint this message and make it plain. In Jesus' name I pray. There's a scripture that says, let us lay aside every sin and weight, or every weight and sin, that so easily besets us. You know, there are weights that beset us. Now let's use an example. I've already talked about the helium balloon and you tie things on it and instead of soaring up, it starts going up slowly. The more you tie to it, it starts just hovering. And then the more you tie to it, it starts sinking. It starts coming down from the weight. Well, see, when Jesus comes to split the clouds to call us home, whether it's individually or whether it's as a group, however he does it, are your weights going to hold you down? And if they do, which ones are they? Because that means you need to lose weight. Oh, don't look at me, tell me, girlfriend, you need to lose. I know I do. But I'm dealing with sin. So, peanut gallery, if you know that you have bitterness, anger, intolerance, if you're judgmental, we're not even talking about the major sins that the Bible describes, like fornication, adultery, homosexuality, stealing, lying, killing, all of that. Let's just deal with the works of the flesh. Wrath, envy, jealousy. Put it in everyday terms, Pat's two cents terms. Foul attitude. Anger. Meanness. Mm. Revenge. Spiteful. Tongue just slice people up and cuts them down to size. Gossip. Oh, we got a list of... You know, that list is almost ad infinitum when it comes to the work of, works of the flesh. Because, see, we look at all the obvious sins. But there are those subtle sins. Oh, uh, don't call me Patricia. Call me prophetess. Patricia Love. Arrogance, pride. Address me as pastor, bishop, apostle. You know what cracks me up about that? Jesus himself, when they called him master, when they called him good master, he said, ain't nobody good but God. He cut that title calling down and wiped it right off the map. And we as human beings, full of our pride, full of our arrogance, we've got to be given a title. Elder so-and-so, doctor so-and-so, I don't care what it is. We are hooked on titles, baby, because we're hooked on pride. And pride, the Bible says, cometh before fall, and a haughty heart before destruction. Some of y'all can't be told about yourselves. You can't take correction. Somebody tries to help you out, you lash at them. Fire them if need be. Ain't nobody gonna stand up here and tell me about it. No, 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 no. No, I ain't having that. They think they are. I'm the one up in here. I'm the, I'm the, I'm the head cheese in here. Well, what do you do? Pat yourself on the back. Don't break your elbow while you're doing it. See, these are the little foxes that spoil the vine. Flesh, 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 and it is full of stench, 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 all the way up to God's nostrils. You walking around prancing and waving your arms, heading up a choir or leading the worship team. You so full of yourself, it just, it's foul, fouls up the air. And then you wonder, where's the anointing? How come God's not moving? 
So you try to pump it up yourself with your talent. See, when you don't come clean with God, you don't clean the atmosphere. When you hide your dirt, you contaminate the anointing. When you lie and misrepresent, you muddy up the glory of God. The Holy Spirit can't flow. He's Holy Spirit's not going to be flowing through your mud, through your muck and your mire. The Holy Spirit is clean, holy. And you think that the Holy Spirit's going to move through you. When you just came out from moving up under those sheets with somebody you have no business being under those sheets with. But because nobody knows, you think it's okay. You're okay. I'm okay. They're okay. He's okay. Oh, and that's okay. No, it ain't okay. Now, whoever started that philosophy, they need to be arrested. Because it has thrown a lot of people off the tracks. Some of you will get in public and disrespect your spouse. You will criticize your spouse in public. You will land blast them. You will disrespect them in front of every... I mean, the things you say. And you really think that because you preach the gospel or you sing the songs of Zion or you teach the little kitties and... In, in Sabbath or Sunday school, that that's okay. Because you serve the Lord. No, you're serving the devil. You just don't know it. See, anytime you choose your flesh over love, anytime you choose the rights of your flesh and your pride over love and, and, and tenderness and compassion, you're serving the devil. I don't care how many collars you got up around your neck. You're serving the devil. So when Jesus comes to split the clouds, don't be like the helium balloon that's got too much tied to it. Get rid of the weight. Shed that weight and the sins that so easily beset you. You can't run a race carrying suitcases. Come on. You got to be free from everything that would resist the wind. You got to be slick. You got to be clean. You got to be very, very clear of debris. If you want a fighting chance of winning that race, even making it to the finish line for that matter. But when you're dragging your resentments behind you, he said that to me. I'll never forget what he did did when he said that and I'll never forget how she stabbed me in the back. That was 1960 and I'll never forget she was wearing a blue dress. I'll never forget that day. That I will, She knows I'll never forgive her. Really? Wait, wait, wait. It would be easier for God to resurrect, to resurrect or to or to rapture a thousand pound man than it will to lift your little 120 pound behind loaded with all the your all of your sinful contaminants hanging all over you some of you wear your mess like jewelry you got your badges on victim they did me wrong and i'll never forget it she thinks she's all that. She ain't about nothing. I'm going to get that woman. I don't care what my wife does. She can fuss all she wants, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get up in that. Really? Uh, don't come too close to me. When you address me, you remember what is my name. No, don't call me by my first name. Call me Apostle. I am not a commoner like you. You must grant me respect. Give respect where respect is due. Sit your little sorry, prideful behind down and ask God to humble you. Because I'm telling you, 
all that stuff you're dealing with, that's going to hinder you from moving anywhere. And you don't want to hear Jesus look at you and say, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Now, I'm not fussing to be mean. Excuse me. I'm saying this out of love because many of us don't realize the sins that are cooped up all up in us, the sins we nurture. God hates it, and you're nurturing it. But it's mine. I spent 30 years developing this. It's mine. No! Don't take it from me! No! It's mine! Just like a hoarder who doesn't want to get rid of the junk. Get rid of the junk now before Jesus comes for you. Because your junk ain't going with you. And if you're hanging on, baby, you will stay here with your junk. God bless you.